My dad became a flight attendant when I was in high school, and he'd had other jobs before that, but he liked to travel and decided a job that he could leave behind as soon as he exited the jetway was a good thing. And so in the last years of me living at home, sometimes my dad was there and sometimes he wasn't. But even when he was gone, there were always reminders of him in the basket of nuts and pretzels that was kept in the pantry that he brought home off the plane. And even for a while, I think my family completely quit buying shampoo because he always brought home minis from the hotel. He might not always have been at the breakfast table, but his presence was always felt. And because he wasn't around to take me places always, I had to use my newly learned driving skills and put them into practice, driving my sister and I to school and to soccer practice. Not too long passed before I started secretly teaching my sister to drive in parking lots, leading her to know a little bit too much to play it cool the first time my parents put her behind the wheel. When I read our scripture for today, this is the period of my life that popped into my mind. It was a big time of transition for me and for my family. And it probably would have been a time of growing independence for me, regardless of my dad's job. But in light of his absence sometimes, I began to do more things on my own that had always been done for me before. It's certainly not the same for the disciples in our story today. My dad always came back through the doors after a four-day trip. They watched Jesus lift into the sky, and he's yet to come back. Jesus, the resurrected Christ, had been hanging out for 40 days. Many people had seen him and had had experiences with him. And then he gathered with his disciples, and he opened their mind to the scriptures, and he helped them to know his place within them. And he gave instructions on what to do next, how to take the baton, as we talked about in our children's sermon today. And he told them that they wouldn't be depending on their own abilities and promised them that they would be clothed with the power of the coming of the Holy Spirit. And then he floated away and he was carried off to heaven, blessing them as he went. This is called the Ascension of Christ. And today we celebrate Ascension Day. Now, I think Ascension Day is a little bit confusing. There are lots of theological implications that we believe about what all of this means that are not spelled out in the scriptural text. And the actual day of the Ascension always occurs on a Thursday, but we acknowledge it on its closest Sunday. I appreciate that St. Mark's never neglects important liturgical days. Uh, but I'm pretty sure we skipped it over it every time in my church growing up, so I never really learned about it then. I'm curious if your church skipped it or celebrated it. There was plenty of emphasis on the birth of Christ in my home church, his life, and his teaching, certainly quite a bit of emphasis on his death and his resurrection, but not so much on the ascension. But it's very theologically significant the text tells us what happened first with this admittedly weird beam me up Scotty kind of moment, but our creeds tell us what happens next. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. When he ascended into heaven and took his place on the holy throne, there, he was no longer limited by time and space of his humanity. This is a coronation moment for Christ where his reign over all things is made known. And because of the fullness of his reign, even in his physical absence, Jesus is still present with us. He is present when two or more are gathered in his name. He is present when we gather around his table and all other tables for that matter. He is present in the first breath of a baby and he is present in the last breath of a beloved grandparent. He is present at the rising of the sun and each evening at its setting. He is present in every feeling of love and present with each heart that aches. When Jesus ascended, he took his seat as Lord of all heaven and earth 
and there is nowhere that exists that is beyond his presence. It seems like a pretty big deal to just skip over since it happens on a Thursday. It was a big deal for the disciples too, because though Jesus is everywhere, it probably didn't always feel like that to the disciples who had walked with him step by step for years. That's the thing about a time of transition. It's hardly ever just one thing that changes. There's usually a ripple effect that happens with any big change of both good and hard things that can get overwhelming. The disciples had to still be carrying with them the grief of not being with their friend all of the time, missing him at the breakfast table, not hearing his words or his laugh. They would probably be living with some level of worry that as his followers, they might meet the same fate as he had on the cross, especially as the church began to be persecuted. And I have to believe that they were dealing with a good dose of imposter syndrome as they were not Jesus, but had started to follow in the footsteps of his ministry. But they also had new purpose, new understanding, and the promise of the power of the Holy Spirit. They were transitioning from having Jesus in front of them all the time, doing great deeds to doing them on their own. Instead of Jesus having all of the words and teaching the crowds, now people looked to them to be the teachers. Without Jesus around to heal the sick through the power of the Holy Spirit, the disciples began to heal people. They started to see everything through eyes like Jesus had, noticing those who the world had tended to overlook, but Jesus never missed. And they became the presence of Christ in their communities by sharing his deep love with all of those around him. This is our last week of worshiping exclusively in our homes, through our computers, our phones, and our televisions. It's a time of transition for us as well. And like the disciples, that brings with it more than just one change, our location. In the midst of our delight at the opportunity to be back together in this space, we carry with us the grief of 3.3 million deaths worldwide from COVID-19. And I'm sure that many of us are carrying the stress that comes with navigating every move we have made for the last months and months on end worrying about safety. And we bring with us the anxiety about remembering how to operate within social norms without being complete weirdos after barely being exposed to small talk for over a year. But also, along with those things, we get to transition back to worshiping together, worshiping God together in this space that is so beloved to so many of us. We get to look each other in the eyes, knowing that Christ is with us here. We get to come with greater understanding of what it means that we belong to one another. After being told for over a year that the best ways that we could love our neighbor was by keeping away from them. We will come together as we replant ourselves in this community with greater sensitivity to the needs of others than perhaps we had before, knowing that some of us are not ready to come back yet, and that's okay, that our congregation extends and will continue to extend far beyond the walls of this building. We will take this turn of ours with the baton differently than perhaps any Ascension Day that has come before this one. I can't wait to have people in the sanctuary. As we gather back together next week, the same is true for us that was true for the disciples. Jesus will be present. We have been clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit to be God's people in the world, witnessing to what we know and sharing God's love with all that we meet. Hallelujah, friends. Amen.